Uh, welcome to the ACEWARE System Cengage Edigo Import Tool. Um, again, we're happy to have with us Kelly Ajmal and Rich from Cengage in um, California. We have Lori on the line from Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Lori's at a conference, so you're stuck with me, uh, Chuck Havlicek, moderating and co-presenting. Uh, so we'll move along. We should have everybody uh, in. Lori, I think I've got the recording started. It's the little red button is on there, so we're good to go. Um, again, Kelly and Rich, glad to have you. And uh, unless you have any opening, you want to have any opening comments? Otherwise, we'll kind of roll with the slideshow. We're good. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for having us. You bet. Thank All you. right. Well, um, again, what is the issue? And I think what we've been trying to do, uh, we've, we for years have had, of course, Aceware users who are partnering with Cengage for Ed2Go and Gatlin programs and multiple different ways they've handled registrations, but generally they've taken the email that come from Ed2Go or their download and enter them into Aceware. So what we're trying to do is how can we simplify this process? And in working with um, uh, Kelly and the staff and Devin, who is one of the tech staff at Ed2Go, uh, the Cengage has developed a download tool through the Ed2Go admin portal. And Aceware has an import tool that allows customers or our partners to automatically load that file into Student Manager. So. <clears throat> Um, here is the basic outline. So um, download from Ed to Go, and at this point, Kelly, I think I'm going to turn that over to you. And um, do you have an example that um, you want? I can make you the um, uh, make you a uh, presenter and actually uh, let you run the screen here. Sure, I, I have a screen ready. All right, so let me make you over. let me make you the presenter. I have two Kellys here, and you should be getting a message saying, "Do you want to be the presenter?" If I got the right Kelly here, I think I have two of you on the line. Are you seeing that become the presenter? Not yet. I think, I think you get you give it to me. So uh, okay, I'm well, the other one, yeah. Let me let me cancel that and make Kelly the presenter. The other Kelly, the presenter. All right. Uh, now, Miss Kelly, do you have your presentation request? I do. All right, and we'll let you carry it away. Okay. Let me know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open a browser. Let me know if everyone's able to view my screen. Uh, we're seeing you as we speak. So there's your okay. Ed to Go panel. Perfect. All right. So um, you all uh, hopefully are familiar with your online administration center. And what I'd like to um, provide a walkthrough of today is how to do a download uh, using your student roster tool. Uh, and that can be found under the tracking tab. Here we go. And you'll go to the first link here, Manage and Enroll Students. I apologize, it's a little slow. Always when, the, when, when, when we're <laughs> on live, it slows down. <clears throat> OK, and so now what we'll want to do is we will want to uh, do a download of your registered students. And you'll do this uh, for specific you know, periods of time. And that can be up to you, uh, you know, depending on how you want to import the student registrations into Aceware. Um, probably will need to be something that uh, once you start, you'll need to kind of you know, track that and determine uh, the last download you did. And then the next time you do it, uh, select the date following that um, initial download. Um, but for uh, purposes today, I'll just go ahead and illustrate uh, how this tool works. So we're going to just pick a random date here. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, a date from last month. And 
and I'll pick then uh, today's date. So we are running a report. Bear with me. We are running a report based on uh, these date ranges, and it would be a report of your um, registrations. Uh, in, uh, excuse me, registrations uh, for the uh, enrollment date of this uh, this time period. So go ahead and then click the search box. All right, and uh, likely you may have several students in the search results. So to select all students, you'll check this box here. It will highlight, and to select all students uh, uh, for that date range, uh, double click on that link, uh, and then you'll want to download, choose the download and open to an Excel file. This will provide you the student registration data that it will provide. You'll have your students, le uh, uh, their first and last name, their email address, uh, phone number, birth date, address, um, the course title, the course type, enrollment date, um, the uh, prices uh, for that course, so the wholesale price as well as your retail price that was charged to the student. Uh, so all the necessary data that would need that would be needed uh, to import this registration into ACEWARE. Um, at this point, all you'll need to do is say, um, uh, save and name the file and uh, Chuck can take it from there. Very good. Well, thank you, Kelly. Um, I apologize here. I'm trying to get to some questions here. I don't think that we've got any at this point, so um, we'll, uh, we'll roll over. So at this point, then, you're looking at the file that you would download from, <clears throat> from your Edgo portal. I'm going to take control back here and put myself back as a presenter. And so, uh, all right, so we followed through the steps from Kelly. Uh, so now we come to the upload to Student Manager. So um, I'm going to first of all kind of talk you through or show you the steps, and then it, I, will open, uh, I will open Manager and we'll actually uh, go through an import example. So uh, there is a preference setup that you'll need to set up on the Register Preferences tab. Uh, we'll go to Tools, where there's an Import X. Uh, and a contract price. And basically, you decide which fee is put on the student's registration. If you click retail, uh, the wholesale price, if you would, is what goes in the registration. If you put net, then the contract price, that is the amount you get to keep um, after you've shared or ed to go has uh, taken its, its um, wholesale price out. <clears throat> that's the, the fee that stays on the registration record. Then um, you would go to Tools, uh, Import, Export, Ed to Go Import, um, and you'll select your file. Uh, and this is basically, you saw the file that Kelly had. This is basically the same kind of thing. Um, the student information, the base course information. Um, the section number is the course number. The section number that you have set up through the Edigo portal is the number that will land into your student manager course file. Uh, now again, 
you can change it if you want, but I would recommend for right now anyway, leaving those section numbers the same because then if you have other students enrolling in that same section, uh, Kelly, do, do section numbers on a given class, say the Intuit QuickBooks, would they change from term to term or from like month to month or are those generally the same section no matter what time, what month they're offered? And Rich, um, whether I'll, I'll, I'll have to confirm with Rich, but I believe the section numbers remain the same. So it's like uh, the, so, the catalog. Rich, go ahead. So the 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 uh, Edigo uh, section numbers. If, if if you're just using the Edigo generated section numbers, uh, they 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 have a uh, a set prefix, but um, each month will have its own suffix. So. It, uh, they, they, they will be unique from, from session to session. Okay, and, and well, and, and with your model, that's good. And I guess what I was trying to get at is if a partner, um, our partners have the ability to change their course numbers, um, but so that after they've uploaded the registrations for a given a month, they could actually go in and modify the course number uh, if they wanted to use a different um, uh, method or a, they use a different format for their course numbering uh, within the system. So all right, well that is uh, that is good. So all right, so that is basically then uh, the file. Now just just a note, uh, that download, you don't have to download a course at a time, you don't have to download a person at a time. You saw Kelly's example, 68 records, uh, multiple names, multiple courses, different registrations, different fees. Uh, the import tool can handle that. Um, so let's see. Let's go do it. All right. So let's roll to uh, let's roll to an example, and I need to get to my desktop here. And let's go to the desktop. I'm going to need to close a couple of things here. Minimize. Hang on, guys. I've got to get get back to my desktop. Close that file. And we're going to get to it. Here we go. Did not have this started. So we're getting in. You'd be getting into Manager. And so. Everybody with me, Kelly, uh, Rich. I'm I'm on the manager main screen. Uh, everybody, uh, make sure that I'm fo people are following my screen. Okay. Definitely seen it. Very good. Okay. So first part is um, setting up the preferences. So, so under Edit Preferences, <clears throat> under the Register tab, this is where you set your fee default. So what is the label you want to put for the the um, retail price? And what is the fee that you'd want to fee label you'd want to put for your contract or for your your net price? And whether you call a contract, you can make your own fees. So that's pretty much the only setup you have to do uh, on your on your programs. <clears throat> Importing them, then we go to Tools, Import, Export, Ed to go Import. And now we have the open file dialog. So you would download that Edigo file somewhere that you can access it from your desktop. It doesn't have to be on the server because whoever, uh, which one of your staff at the institution that's dealing with Edigo uh, can put it on their local computer because it's just a one-way read. We just import it and it's done. We're going to pick the Edigo import file. <clears throat> ask a couple questions. Do you want to group these registrations? Now, I'm going to say yes and circle back to that, uh, why we're doing that um, in a bit. We'll group them all together. And do you want to assign them a source code? I would certainly recommend that you do that so that you know how the registrations got in your database. By default, we'll give you an Edigo source code. You may change that if you wish. Hit the OK button and bing. Five records processed, five names, four courses, five registrations. 
So um, that's it. I, don't know, I didn't count the steps, guys, but uh, four or five steps, and you've imported a whole month's worth, most of the time, of registrations. Now, <clears throat> let's go take a look at those registrations. Now, I'm going to use our person locator, and I'm going to look up based on the source code. Whoa, if I get the right magic box here. Source code of ed to go And by the way, I would recommend this might be a good way for you to uh, be able to verify that the names came in uh, the way you wanted, <clears throat> is to use the person locator, uh, where you can actually use the source code and search for ed to go Well, there we are. We have five names in the list here. Uh, let's just pull up one of those. So from that ed to go Excel file, um, we bring in a student record. We put in the email, phone number. Uh, we indicate the source code for, or the there is a there is a category code or a I forget what you call it, uh, Kelly. Um, program area, a grouping area. Uh, we would say your interest code. Uh, the category code of the course, is it health and fitness, or is it uh, business, or is it accounting or finance or web design? We actually will import that in as an interest code into your student manager interest code field. <clears throat> the registration itself now will have, again, the tracking code of ed to go There's that course number that it created. Uh, using the section number from the ed to go uh, registration. In our example, we said we want to store the contract price. That is the amount less the ed to go um, wholesale that you get to keep for this particular class. <clears throat> and we've grouped all these registrations together. So all of the registrations that we downloaded are part of a registration group. Um, I think a lot of you use grouping. If you haven't, uh, use it. Uh, you may want to think about it uh, as you're working with your ed to go programs. Now, um, let me go ahead and go back to the course then. Now, again, the course that we're looking at here is one that did not exist prior to doing the upload. So at part of that import tool, it will create a course for each unique section, ESMB 0616. Uh, it'll create a course for that section automatically. It puts in the course code, the subject code, puts in the number of hours it meets, puts in the begin date, end date. Uh, we don't worry about time. It'll call it an online course. It'll actually build in the two fees. It will show the wholesale fee and the uh, or the retail fee and then your contract portion um, it'll be uh, displayed on the on the main course screen and again if there were multiple students uh, it would show all, if there were multiple students registering for that course during the same uh, month that you did the download it will only it, it won't make a duplicate course it will add those people into the same course so that is pretty much the process. I'm going to uh, look up the courses now. We'll use the other tool, the Quick Lookup. We just talked about this yesterday, if you were in the webinar, the F2 key. So we're going to say View All, and we're going to use as a custom condition uh, that they were added today. We'll do it based on the add date. And here are the five classes that were added today um, so that you've got um, this was one the Belgian beer is one that I actually did on another example so if we're looking at this course here you see that there were two students that were enrolled in this course so again it will not enter a duplicate course number um, as you're as you're working on the course trying to think um, Lori, if uh, will we have duplicate records in the database? Uh, hang on a second, guys. I'm looking at the questions. 
various net and retail prices. A couple of questions asked. Uh, one was, will it create duplicate names? And the answer is no. Uh, what it uses, what it uses is the, um, uh, and this kind of follows some of the questions that are popping up here. Number one, the email address of the student is the unique identifier for Ed2Go registration. So if you've got a student who is enrolled in two Ed2Go courses, and again, whether it's the same term or even if that student was an existing student in your manager database, it will not create a duplicate name record. It will add the registration to the existing record. Number two, um, on a uh, the fees, if it used fees, the fees are going to be unique on a course by course basis. So if you've got a, um, the, and the, the net and the retail prices that you set up in your Ed2Go portal are the prices that are going to go into your student manager. Um, now again, uh, Kelly and, and Rich, partners can choose to set their own retail prices on your programs, right? That is correct. Right. So again, um, you, you're not stuck with the Ed to Go suggested retail. You can, um, you know, either mark it up or do some discounting on that if you want. Now, uh, we talked about group two or three times. I want to get back to that. Um, payments by group, and and again, I know one of the issues that um, uh, Ed to Go partners are uh, working through is this idea of the net check. Um, but that if you've got registrations for the month or for the reporting period and you correlate those registration, you correlate that registration download with your uh, reimbursement schedule with Ed2Go, you have the ability to go ahead and make one payment. When you get the Ed2Go check, you apply one payment to the group and it will automatically apply the payment to every one of the students in your EBGO download. And so Kelly and Rich, that's you know the idea of if if we can match up, if we can match up the the, the check that your partners get as part of their EBGO commission, if you would, um, with the fees that are tied to the registrations we have the tool to allow them to automatically distribute that payment all the way across. Um, there was a question about Ed2Go, um, and uh, do you still receive email notification of a new registration from Ed2Go? And um, I, I don't think nothing we're doing here changes that set of procedure, does it? No, absolutely not. You, yeah. you will still receive those, those notifications, those email notifications at the time of registration. Very good. Um, other question from the staff was, will this also work for career courses through Ed2Go? Yes, you may do yep. a catalog download for the career training programs as well. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Well, uh, other kind of questions that we've got going on. Again, we, we've kind of run through this. Um, there's really not a whole lot of um, a whole lot of moving parts to it. Again, the ed, the ed to go portal where I guess um, and Kelly and partners and this is again we're um, this is our first first attempt at this to try to work out a system that's going to make it easier for everybody um, is going to be the idea of tying that payment check or the commission check to the group of registrations that you brought in. Uh, and I'm going to roll back to manager here. And so let's look up, I think, was it Riley? Yeah, Rotonda Riley was one of our students. So the idea of a group, and if you haven't been doing grouping for you ASOR partners out there, the idea is that you basically can create a shopping cart of multiple people, multiple courses, multiple registrations, in the Ed2Go model, we've created, in essence, a shopping cart of all of the registrations for Ed2Go for that batch that you've imported. It keeps track of the total amount due. And so again, if uh, in a perfect world, if your numbers match up and you don't have um, you know, locally collected money that, that uh, get modified out of the net check, 
you can go in when that check comes in you can go into payments uh, put in the amount of the payment it's a check oops it's cash I, I yeah they wish you sent you, you don't send them cash do you No, you send them a check set in the check number payer name would be Ed to go Ed to go send gauge And again, the address. And again, if you've got Ed to go, if you if you put Ed to go as a uh, as a customer or as a firm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let Ace Hardware pay for this. Send it, send the check to these guys. Um, you apply that $256 check, and it automatically distributes the money to each of the registrations that are part of this particular group. So again, I think uh, there was a question from Melody. You'll note that again, the contract price for this course is different from, well, that's the same course or the same contract price, $54. So again, it, it basically lets you address registration by registration what your margin is. So, all right, uh, the question was, in what version of student manager is this ready? Uh, the current version 44.5 is a brand brandest newest release. Um, Matthew, I think this has been in there for oh, I think if you're running 43, which would be a August September release, you'll have this option available. Uh, so again, it is um, it is in there now. It's been there really available since August. We've been. Kelly and Rich and I have been trying to find a date to get together to do the webinar. So, other kind of questions, uh, Kelly or um, um, question whether you have a note, Kelly, about Ed to Go preferences. That was um, a message asked. I think Lori was posting that. Can you check your chat mode, Kelly? That was a question maybe headed your way. A uh, question about Ed to Go preferences. I don't. I didn't see what the. I can't scroll down further to see the question. Um, I think I must. I think that's Lori doing the, the 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 chatting there. So Lori, if you'd want to send that to me, I'm able to monitor monitor that. And Lori is checking. I don't. I don't have the other. Let me. Let me see what else is out here for questions. Crystal. And boy, I apologize, guys. I'm just not seeing I'm not seeing all of the questions here. Crystal, Linda, Melissa. Um, I uh, we've got these questions, of course, uh, Kelly and Rich are being logged, are being logged um, in our uh, Ed to Go or in our uh, Go to Meeting panel, and so we will we'll get back okay. to that. If there are questions that are relevant to the rest of the group, I will definitely I will definitely get it out to people. Um, Rich or Kelly, any other um, uh, comments on that? Again, uh, the idea, folks, is that we've got a um, um, we're trying to get this started. Um, it is ready for you right now uh, with your ed to go portal. Uh, if you're on version 43 of Student Manager or newer, uh, so again, uh, if you look at the top right left corner of your Student Manager screen, anything version 43 or newer will have these tools on here. So, all right. Um, um. Okay, I got. Like, did you get that last question? Yeah, I did. I did get. I did get the questions. I think there's a couple questions about the payments. Basically, you know, what are the checks going to look like from Ed okay. to go? Um, how can we match those up? Um, so, what I'd like to add is, you know, if you if you have specific questions about the accounting reports. Uh, if you could defer to your Etigo account manager, and we'll we'll talk through that with you. Um, I think it is a, a good time uh, to share with uh, those that are uh, on the meeting today that um, to ensure that the registrations match up well in Aceware, uh, what we did do for you all is we went ahead and waived the bank transaction fee that's associated with 
uh, each online paid registration. So you will notice that um, uh, there will no longer be a charge from Etigo uh, for those types of enrollments. Um, so hopefully that's a, a nice benefit <laughs> to all of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yes, please uh, reach out to your account manager if you want to talk specifically about the accounting reports and um, you know maybe some best practices on how and when to do the uh, roster download, uh, so that you're you know matching up um, the import of these registrations with um, our accounting reports. Very good. Well, I I, I think the partners uh, there should be a lot of smiling faces. There should be emojis coming at us here with happy faces on that, Kelly. So. Um, I, that 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 is uh, nice of you and a great uh, great customer service uh, service uh, or enhancement that you're offering. So um, I uh, again uh, want to thank uh, Rich and Kelly for joining us. Um, I'm excited about what opportunities this is going to provide. Um, again, uh, folks, give it a try. Check it out. As you have questions that um, you'd like to have modified or things that you want to tweak, let us know. My email is here. Kelly's is there. But as Kelly has said, uh, related to your download of your um, your download of your courses and your schedule for your finance tracking, check with your uh, Cengage account executive, account partner. Um, and they'll be able to help you uh, coordinate that. And um, again, the goal would be to try to reduce the number of steps that we have to do, obviously, to uh, get those EdToGo students in and um, get them to service and get them on your book. So very good. Well, uh, again, one more time, Kelly, Rich, Matthew, thanks for all your help in making this happen. And uh, everybody else, have a good week, and um, we will be back at you later. Bye-bye, everybody.